Gaetano Badalamenti, a formidable member of the triumvirate ruling the Sicilian Mafia Commission in the 1970s alongside Stefano Bontad and Luciano Leggio, orchestrated a reign of violence and corruption. However, his expulsion from the commission in 1978 marked a seismic shift in power. Reportedly during his tenure, Badalamenti orchestrated the delivery of a staggering $1.65 billion worth of heroin into the United States over five years, leaving an indelible mark on the nation's history and highlighting his influence within the transnational drug trade. This enigmatic figure's name forever symbolizes the fragility of power and the unrelenting pursuit of dominance in the criminal underworld. Gaetano Badalamenti was born on September 14, 1923 in Chinisi, a rural town near the coast west of Palermo. Gaetano was the youngest of the family's five boys and four girls. His father had a string of seven parcels of land on the outskirts of Chinisi, where the family raised cows, goats, sheep, and produced cheese. In the ancient tradition the boys worked the farm with their father, the girls stayed home and helped their mother tend the house. Gaetano was allowed to go to school when he was six years old, but by the time he was ten he had been called back to the farm. He had completed more formal education than anyone else in his family. When Badalamente, an 18-year-old draftee who had little interest in dying for his country, was called up, World War II had already been virtually lost for the Italians. He was posted to Calutafimi and assigned to an infantry division. According to Badalamente, he deserted his army unit during the American bombing campaign and re-entered the war as a guerrilla in the summer of 1943, as American troops conquered Sicily and started their sweep up the Italian boot. Later, Badalamente insisted that he had been consulted by American Office of Strategic Services officials regarding the invasion of Sicily, had served with the invading American army, and had taken part in attacks on retreating German soldiers in June 1943. Unfortunately, his account is inaccurate because the Americans did not arrive in Sicily until July 9th. The Mafia was crushed and persecuted underground for a quarter of a century under Italian fascism, to the point where the dispersed brotherhood and the American forces in occupation saw themselves as natural allies in the years leading up to and following the Italian capitulation. Lucky Luciano was imprisoned in 1942 when U.S. naval intelligence asked him to utilize his tremendous influence to stop sabotage in the port of New York, which was then and later governed by the largely Italian Longshoremen's Union. Because of his collaboration, Luciano received an early release from federal prison and deportation to Italy in 1946 as a reward. The Sicilian Mafia returned aggressively after the war, bringing Badalamente, a young mafioso from Chinisi who had already established a reputation, along with it. His oldest brother, Emanuele, was in the U.S., in Monroe, Michigan, operating a supermarket and gas station. In March 1946 he was named in an arrest warrant on charges of conspiracy and kidnapping, then according to him, he boarded the SS Satinia in Naples on the pretext of buying cigarettes from a sailor and stowed away until the ship docked in Port Newark or Baltimore. However, prosecutors later suspected that Badalamente had really slipped into the country from Canada. He claimed that he worked in Emanuele's store and gas station, sorting stock and cleaning windshields. In 1950 the immigration authorities caught up with Badalamente and deported him right back to Italy. Within several years he had married and had two sons, had begun exporting lemons, and had founded a successful construction business that supplied the crushed rock for Palermo's Punta Resi airport, which, along with its booming transatlantic drug traffic, fell within the Chinisi Mafia family's sphere of influence. Badalamente was first arrested in Italy in 1953 for smuggling cigarettes. He was apprehended once more in 1957 with 3,000 kilograms of cigarettes from abroad. 
In October 1957, Lucky Luciano had arranged Sicilian and American Mafia leaders to meet at Palermo's Grande Albergo e della Palmi. According to Tommaso Buschetta, the bosses decided that the savage Albert Anastasia would have to be expunged. The same month, Buschetta recalled, he, Luciano, and Joe Bonanno met for dinner in Palermo. Also present were Carmine Galanti and other trusted Bonanno aides, and several other Sicilian men of honor, and among them, Gaetano Badalamente. However, Badalamente insisted, the meeting never happened. According to Buschetta, Joe Bonanno told him to set up a commission like they have in the United States, where no man of honor could be killed without the approval of the commission, and that the system worked very well. Within a year Buschetta and Salvatore Greco began setting up the commission between the main western cities of Palermo, Trapani, and Abrigento. For five years the commission functioned smoothly, until June 30, 1963, when a bomb planted in a Fiat Giulietta in front of a garage in Villabate, Sicily, killed two passers-by. The same day in Palermo's rural Shakuli district, a car bomb intended to kill Salvatore Greco, exploded killing seven policemen and three bystanders, and became known as the Shakuli Massacre. Round about this time, Badalamente assumed leadership of the Mafia in Chinisi. After the Shakuli Massacre, many of the most senior mafioso fled to the Americas to immerse themselves full-time in trafficking for the United States market. In the 1960s, most of America's heroin came from Turkey, where the opium poppy could be cultivated legally, but where a large slice of production found its way onto the illegal market. At this stage of heroin's history, the Sicilian Mafia were not the dominant suppliers to the United States, the bulk of the heroin consumed in North America came through the Corsicans. The Corsicans were enterprising, with a worldwide network of contacts and a secure base for their refineries in Marseille. Then in 1971, President Richard Nixon declared a war on drugs. The Turkey Marseille New York Channel, known as the French Connection, was picked out as the war's strategic objective. One by one, the Marseille refineries were shut down and the chemists were arrested. However, Turkish production soon revived after the Sicilian Mafia stepped in, and as said in the book, Mafia Republic, Cosa Nostra was about to become addicted. After a six-year hiatus following the Shakuli bomb, the Sicilian Mafia resumed its constitutional life. The first formal shape that Cosa Nostra's politics took was a triumvirate of senior bosses who were entrusted with reawakening the organization's dormant structures in the province of Palermo. The first was Stefano Bontad, known as the Prince of Villa Grazia, capo of the largest family in Palermo. The second triumvir was Gaetano Badalamente, the boss of Chinisi, where Palermo's new airport provided a huge source of revenue, who by now had long-standing links with the Cosa Nostra in Detroit. The third was Luciano Leggio from Corleone, but he would actually be represented by Salvatore Arena. Upon assuming his place in the triumvirate, according to Juan Pentito, Badalamente's first act was to have a small-time Neapolitan criminal shot. This was the man who, years earlier, had slapped Lucky Luciano at Naples' race course. In 1974, when the full commission was constituted, Badalamente was at the head of the table. In 1975, a brand new industry took off, one that would bring in more money for the mafia than construction, kidnapping, and cigarette smuggling combined. The leader of the Palermo Commission, Badalamente, who was well-connected in the U.S., had seen the market gap brought about by President Nixon's war on drugs and was well-positioned to take advantage of it. They would smuggle heroin through the same channels they used to smuggle cigarettes. Badalamente himself took charge of the first expedition to meet suppliers of Turkey. After a month, investors had tripled their money. Francesco Marino Manoia, a major refiner of heroin from the Santa Maria di Gesù family headed by Stefano Bontad, would spend a week at a time inside one of the laboratories. Gaspar Mutolo became a broker, contacting the wholesale suppliers in the near and far east, bringing batches to Sicily and selling them on to traffickers within the Cosa Nostra, who had access to the U.S. Both these men would later become pentitos. 
Later in 1976, just as his heroin ventures were really taking off, Mutolo was arrested. While incarcerated, he would meet a Singapore Chinese heroin importer named Kobok Kin. By the late 1970s, the few who had access to the American market and formed part of the transatlantic heroin elite, like Badalamente, Bontad, and Salvatore Inzerillo, became very rich. Inzerillo was the central personage in Sicily for its intercontinental super clan, the Inzerillos, Gambinos, Spatolas, and Di Majos. Together, they controlled all the heroin marketing arrangements in the Western Hemisphere. Meanwhile, Salvatore Rina had already been planning to turn his economic weakness into political strength. Giuseppe Peppino Impostato was born in Chinisi, in the province of Palermo, into a mafia family. When Peppino was 15, Cesare Manzella, the then boss of Chinisi who was also his uncle by marriage, was killed by a TNT-laden Alfa Romeo Giulietta during the First Mafia War. Peppino was traumatized and vowed if it was the Mafia responsible, he would fight it for the rest of his life. Peppino Impostato joined the left-wing Italian Socialist Party of Proletarian Unity in 1965 and founded the newsletter called The Socialist Idea. Peppino Impostato's method of attack on the Mafia was humor and satire. He established a modest neighborhood radio station in 1977, where he made fun of both politicians and mafiosi. He regularly exposed the criminal activity of the mafiosi in Chinisi as well as that of Sitting Bully, a flimsy alias for Gaetano Badalamente. Peppino clearly understood the danger represented by Badalamente, and Badalamente clearly understood the danger of Peppino. Peppino's struggles were too public and determined for the Mafia to allow his tireless activities to continue. Apparently, his father tried to protect him but unfortunately he was killed in a car accident in 1977, which might have been a premeditated murder. Apparently, Badalamente waited until after Peppino's father had died to give the order to kill Peppino. On the night of May 8, 1978, Peppino was kidnapped on his way back from the radio station and taken in his own car to a tumble-down stone shack a few yards from the Palermo-Tropani railway line near the boundary fence of the airport. There he was beaten and tortured before being dumped on the track with several sticks of dynamite strapped to his torso. Early the following morning, Railway workers reported that a section of track had been damaged. Fragments of Peppino's body and clothes were scattered over a 300-meter radius around it, only his legs, parts of his face, and a few fingers were recognizable. Back in the U.S. in 1976, undercover FBI agent Joe Pistone had infiltrated the Bonanno crime family as Donnie Brasco. He would deliver crucial intelligence setting a case in motion that would grow into a massive multi-agency and multinational effort with key contributions coming from the New York Police Department, the DEA, U.S. Customs, and international authorities in Italy, Sicily, Spain, Switzerland, Turkey, Brazil, Canada, Great Britain, Germany, and Mexico. Over more than four years, these authorities would gather evidence and surveillance on multiple players on multiple continents. In Italy in 1978, the Corleonesi had framed Inzerillo for murder by killing the boss of Risi, Giuseppe di Cristina, on Inzerillo territory. They had also gravely insulted Stefano Bontad. Despite the commission's stringent prohibition on kidnapping within the island of Sicily, they had abducted and killed Luigi Corleo, the father-in-law of a wealthy businessman who was under Bontad's protection. The same year, Badalamente was expelled from the commission and replaced by Michaela Greco. On the evening of April 23, 1981, Stefano Bontad was shot and killed. Almost three weeks later, Salvatore Inzerillo was killed with the same Kalashnikov used to kill Bontad. Both were killed by Giuseppe Greco. In August 1982, Badalamente was in Balem, Brazil, to see Buscetta, to try and persuade him to go back to Italy and direct the revolt against the Corleonesi. However, after numerous persuasive attempts, Buscetta declined. After Badalamente left Brazil, 
Bouchetta's wife grew worried, her brother had disappeared and on September 11, 1982, Bouchetta's two sons, Antonio and Benedetto, in Palermo, also disappeared just a few days after General Carlo Alberto Dalla Chiesa was murdered by Giuseppe Greco. Three days later, Bouchetta's older brother Vincenzo and his son were shot dead in their Palermo glass factory. Reacting to a dozen murders of his own relatives, Bottolamente sent two men to kill Giuseppe Greco, however, they missed and were found dead six weeks later. In 1984, the FBI through wiretaps would discover many phone calls from a public phone booth in Rio de Janeiro and traced the calls to and from tiny towns like Temperance, Michigan. During the previous months, phone calls were made from Rio to Oregon, Illinois, to New York and back. On one phone call, Bottolamente was talking to a nephew, Pietro, Pete, Alfano, owner of a pizzeria in Oregon, Illinois, from a phone booth in Brazil, in February 1984. The FBI discovered that Bottolamente had planned a meeting in Madrid with his nephew. Bottolamente was preparing to send 20 kilos of cocaine to the Brooklyn Ring via his Midwest nephews. On April 8, 1984, in Madrid, Spain, Spanish authorities acting on information from the FBI were watching closely and arrested Bottolamente and his son Vito Bottolamente together with Pietro Alfano. Both America and Italy had come to the end of exhaustive investigations underway since 1980. Both were preparing to put the Sicilian Mafia on trial for a continuing criminal conspiracy dating back to 1975. Both wanted Bottolamente, however, by mutual consent the Americans got Bottolamente and the Italians got Buschetta, who was arrested in October 1983 and awaiting extradition to either the United States or Italy. On April 9, 1984, of the 31 suspects named in the charges, 24 men were charged with operating an organized crime ring that has brought $1.65 billion worth of heroin into the United States since 1979. The participants in the heroin ring were said to include some members of the Gambino as well as the Bonanno crime family. Investigators accused Bottolamente of arranging heroin to be moved to Sicily, Spain or South America before smuggling it into the United States. Salvatore Catalano, the owner of a bakery in Queens and a significant member of the Bonanno Mafia family located in New York, was one of those caught up in the dragnet. Catalano was Bottolamente's main point of contact with the American Mafia and the leader of his crew, a group of immigrants from Sicily, known as Zips. In 1985, Bottolamente and over a dozen other defendants were on trial in New York, which the media dubbed as the Pizza Connection Trial, and lasted 17 months, the longest trial in judicial history of the United States. During the trial, a key witness and admitted Mafia member, Salvatore Contorno, confirmed that Bottolamente was a former head of the Sicilian Mafia Commission. The defendants in the trial were charged with operating an extensive ring that smuggled large quantities of narcotics into the United States and using pizzerias to conceal drug trafficking and money laundering. Authorities would later learn that when Bottolamente got expelled from the commission in 1978, he nevertheless continued to run drugs out of Sicily until 1982, after which he took off to conduct his business elsewhere. Frequently on the move, he ultimately traveled with his wife and oldest son to Madrid. Gaetano Bottolamente was convicted and sentenced to 45 years in the federal penitentiary in Marion, Illinois. His son, Vito, was acquitted. On April 11, 2002, Gaetano Bottolamente was sentenced to life imprisonment for the 1978 murder of activist radio broadcaster, Peppino Impostato. On April 29, 2004, Bottolamente died from heart failure at the age of 80.